Hey guys, here's the next installment of the Town Masters Hall. In this one, we're going to focus here on, uh, on decorating a space. So I'm going to work between layers and show you guys how to use different elements from, uh, from the Forgotten Adventures pack specifically to, to dress things and do some certain things. So here I'm just going to put some shadows underneath these doors because even though the artwork doesn't include it you have to remember that those doors are standing up and they're going to create some sort of shadow and this just all helps make the scene look more three-dimensional and more believable and if you want to you can always double up a shadow until you feel like you've got the right the right effect Like my last series, this particular one I'm slowing down. I'm going really in real time here to show you what I'm looking for. So I'm going to look for some stair pieces, specifically wood stairs. And there's a lot in this set that you have to, uh, to make things out of. You'll find I go to these, and, and now the, the wall pieces I'll use quite a bit as well. So I'll turn the shadow off because I don't, I don't like the built-in shadows. And since this is a countertop, I'm going to go to level 200. 200 is a good level for anything that's going to be a counter or a table. It's enough space to put things underneath it. And it's enough space to put things on top of it and still be able to put shadows under those things. And, you know, there's an over-under tool as well. So when you place objects you can just click them over or under on the same, same level. It's almost like having your own sub-level system. And what I want to do is instead of making these look like flat boards, I'm just slightly expanding them just so it looks like, like if you've ever looked at a table that's got like a lip on it, for example. It's just a quick and easy way to, to make that kind of effect. And I'm going to my circle tool. You can use 40% or 60%. depends on how much shadow depth that you want to put into your scene. I typically will stick to 40% with the, with the shadow circle. And remember, you look at your scale on the left. You want that to be one, typically, when you're placing objects, because that's how the artist originally thought of the scale. So if you stick with one, you're generally going to be good. Of course, you can make it smaller or larger, but the more you deviate from that, the more you're, you're going to have scale problems. Scale problems when you look at your map and you see that the chairs are really, really small and this couch is really, really big. And it just looks weird. So I'm going to go back to 200. This is a book and it's flat. It doesn't need shadows underneath it. So I'm going to put that at 200 above or over the um, the countertop there. Give this coil a little a little color. And this is sort of the, re the reception area if you haven't figured that out yet. This is where a clerk would sit. Now I'm going to look for what's my color motif. So you'll see me try to keep colors relatively consistent, especially when you get into furniture. It's like when you design a space, you can have different color furniture or you can, but you have to tie them in with the same color. So I'm going to try to stick with the color motif here. And I'm trying to decide on the aesthetic. These are all ashen footstools. I'm trying to ask myself, is this a really opulent Town Masters Hall, is this, is this really poor or is it somewhere in the middle? So I'm trying to find a style that hits that in the middle. You know, this is part of a, a much larger town, town that I'm modeling after Phandalin, or those types of towns and lore. And so I do want this to be, uh, this particular place to be upscale, but not but not stick out from the town that it lives in. There's a lot of these pots. You'll notice I just searched pot in the text field. And 
there's some really, really great ones in here. And I like this particular one. This is one of the, the stone pots and it matches the other stone, this particular like grayish, yellowish stone that comes from Forgotten Adventures. Put those pots on level one. And then I put the, I'm putting the greenery on level two in case I want to put a slight shadow underneath them. I'm going to grab that same asset, put it back to level one, and just add a bit more decor, just some more pots around. Figured that might be a decor item that this individual would have had access to and would have chosen. And debating on whether I put anything on the mantle itself here. And of course, I'll go back to my level 100 with my shadow tool. I'll put it underneath everything else. Now I'm just going to nestle all these little items into the scene. I'm going to stay on the darker side away from the fire. And you can see how the light then gathers around these objects, and it does make it look like this is a setting now. They're not just flat objects sitting on a on a flat floor. And like I said in the last one, I have been in this video, I cut out some of my thinking time. I just sit back and I evaluate a space and I think about what might go into it. In this case, I'm going to play around for the first time with the modular rugs. I'm at level 100. I'm underneath everything else. And I haven't played with these a lot in the past, but since they were fixed with Forgotten Adventures 2.0, I'm, I'm wanting to just experiment with these and see, see what they bring to the table. I like this one. It's got the gold runner. Feels a little bit more opulent. You can see that they, they merge together on the faded side. I've turned on snap to grid. So I can make it just a little bit more precise as they snap. And I'm looking at what other options are available with this modular set to see, you know, if I can make these sort of uh, branch out, which I can't, that's fine. I would need like a, a T intersection or a four-way intersection to do that. I need some statues in the corner. There's not a lot of options. Uh, Tom Cartos has some options, but I'm trying to make this map just with one artist. I'm trying not to force my Patreons into multiple artists uh, too often. So I'm going to stick with what Forgotten Adventures offers. Now, instead of going with the standard one, that would be too big. So I'm dropping the scale down to 0.6. I'm at level 200 because I may want to put something underneath these statues, like a base, certainly shadows. So here I'll put a base in, I'll drop to level 100. And I'll just drop down its size, I'll tuck it under the wall. What I'm trying to do is just make it look like this is standing on a nice pedestal, but I don't want it to be too obvious. So. Now I'm going to go over that pedestal with shadows to obscure it. Of course, it's near the floor, so it's going to be obscured under the, the uh, statue itself. Now I'll go back to my, my trusty stair pieces. And now what I want to show you, I've done this technique before, but you have to dig for it. 
I'm just going to make some picture frames. Imagine that this town master's hall will have pictures of the lore of the town, of uh, various famous people, you know, old town masters that have occupied the, the role. Uh, maybe some artwork of the area. Maybe the local artists. And this is where the storytelling comes into play, but I want to just get these, these frames in here. And you can see I'm just using stair pieces at different sizes and either above or below each other. And that's really it. I'll do some fancier stuff here. I'll grab some of these stair pieces and I'll actually go underneath the ones I just placed and I'll make it look like there's some embellishment to this particular frame. I'll even drop them down and make them look like that embellishment continues down at the level below. Very, very subtle visually. Your players probably not notice everything, but they will be able to guess that these are all picture frames. And certainly if you decide to make story around it, that'll be clear. So just imagine every picture frame story you've ever walked into and all of the crazy you know, layering and thicknesses and materials. Here we might imagine three simple frames next to each other. Again, I'm just very, very slightly decreasing or increasing the size of these to, to make that work. These are all at level 300. I've also put picture frames at level 400. It's not typically anything that's going to go above them or below them. I wanted these picture frames to be obscured by the shadows that I placed on the wall. So those are level 400. So I put these just underneath that. So they're, they're automatically being obscured by the shadows. Now I'm going to go to level 100 and put down some filing cabinets. I'm going to use a little trick here. Use an empty filing cabinet. It doesn't have the drawer on it or the door, if that's, a, if that's a door. And I'm going to grab the drawer tool and I'm going to put it underneath that first filing cabinet, make it look like the drawer is peeking out. I realized that I want to put something in the drawer, so I'm going to put that filing cabinet itself at level 200. That way I can fit something between the drawer and its cabinet. If you look at paper, you can see you have a lot of really cool options now from Forgotten Adventures. Maybe this is an old newspaper from the town, which reminds me I have to build a printing press soon. I saw some assets in there for that. And instead of using my path tool or my, uh, my object tool, I'm going to use my path tool here. I'm using the double path, and that just gives you a nice even shadow underneath, especially straight, um, straight objects. Keeping the same color I had before, I'm going to maintain that color. I'm going to be at level 100 here and I'm just going to put some seating here around the town hall. trying to put those seats in square such that, you know, NPCs could occupy both sides. I'll use some of the same decorating style as the, the other areas. And you can't see those pots, but I know they're there and you never know what I might do with this map next, so just put them in there. Throw in some more shading to nestle all of these items into their places. You don't have to be exact. It's actually better. I found if your, your shading is a little bit mixed up, it seems more like real life. I 
what I'm realizing here is I don't like how much floor there is. There's a lot of empty floor. So I'm at level 100. And I'm going to frame this floor with some stone. This is a big enough building. There'd be a lot of stone around. And what it does is it just helps me shrink up that floor. I still have the same playable space, but I'm breaking it up a little bit. So I just don't have a, one big monotonous floor. And I imagine that's a design motif that would, would flow through you know, the rest of this building. So I'm just going to figure out how much do I want to flow it through here. Certainly think the bathroom would, or the water closet would have stone in it. This, this particular stone pattern is just a little bit too defined to, to use it too much. It creates its own monotonous pattern if, if you use it too much. I think this feels like a good, a good fit. You'll notice I changed the uh, the color. I darkened it. It's one of the most important things you can do is is take a look at your assets, especially the colorable ones, and figure out if you can darken your your walls and your floors. I think with this room, what I want to make is like a like a file room. This is where all the the annals of the town and and records are kept. It's, it's deeds and other things. I like the idea from a storytelling perspective to give them a room like this where they find something important. I'm on level 300 above that piece that I set. I want to, I want to start showing differences of depths between these, these, different items. And then I decided I want these to really be stacked um, filing cabinets. And so that the difference is, is very subtle, but I'm taking these drawers to create that effect and I'm offsetting them just a bit. And you can see I'm even offsetting them in particular directions to give you the sense that you're looking down And that, you know, there's multiple rows of these things. Maybe that one's left just slightly bit open. And I'm back to level 100 here as I, as I place these paths. And I'm just filling in the gaps with the uh, circle shed shadow tool. Now I want to do something with scrolls. So I'm going to go to my scatter tool, which is one that I don't use a whole lot. And I'm going to select a bunch of these scrolls. They're all these horizontal scrolls. I'm going to turn my shadow off because you do have to do that. It's a separate shadow toggle than the, the other object one. I don't know why. And now I'm setting them all at a fixed rotation. So I tried zero, but that's the horizontal rotation. So I changed them both to 90. And what that does is it lets you maintain that orientation. And I drop the spread down and then I just drag and it'll randomly place these in a fixed rotation, alternating between the light and the yellow or the white and the yellow paper. And that's how you can create a nice smattering of things that have to have the same rotation. I'm going to place this cupboard just above that. I imagine that this window is, is high up. I want it to be sort of a, a darkened room where the window's high up and it's casting light down into the room. And I'm going to do the same thing I did a second ago. 
This time I'm going to go to level 200 over. So I'm just under that, that cupboard and over the, the table underneath it, the countertop. And now I'm considering what else might be in this room. Maybe not necessarily filed away. Again, some old newspapers and records. I'm at level 300 now, so I'm at a whole level above those, those filing cabinets. Just got to remember if there's a difference in elevation of these things, you really need to show that the artwork isn't built to, to do that part for you. I'll pull up my point light tool, tool, drop it to the lowest range possible. Decided that's too much light there um, on the point, so I'm going to use the diffuse tool, decrease its intensity. So I want to just show where the light's coming from. And I've decided in general, I, this is a good time to kind of light up my spaces. In very low range, relatively low intensity. I don't like that when my light pours out of the windows, at least not when I'm making prefabs. So I try to make sure that it's, it's low enough range that it doesn't, doesn't start pouring out the window. And just looking at my space now, seeing what I want to make of these, these last couple of rooms. Interestingly, that, that particular rug doesn't recolor. Must be a bug. level 100 under, that way it goes even under the shadow objects that I placed. Now imagine in this particular town master's hall, he likes to have the nice chair and he likes everyone else to have the simple wooden chairs. So I'm gonna to try to put these in discrete squares so they can be occupied. I put these at level 200, which is unusual, but because of that rug, I had to do that. I can't put them at level 100 with that rug and still get shadows underneath them without then moving things around. I could always do that. I could always use the uh, move to back or move to front tool, but this wasn't too complicated. Decided, I, of course, I need some more picture frames in here. And I feel like this town master is supposed to have a sort of his at the ready stash of scotches and wines. To level 100, just underneath that, I used the uh, wardrobe without the doors to to that particular piece of furniture. I don't, I don't, I'm not crazy about the table options. In Forgotten Adventures, I use them all the time because they're convenient, but I often make my own surfaces with planks or with some of these more um, semi-finished furniture pieces like that, that wardrobe.
looking for a wine glass here and I have to remember what they're called. Now, I made this video before Forgotten Adventures put out their amazing clutter pack. And they put so many wine goblets and tools and things that go in the kitchen really filled a, a huge hole that they had. So I'll be using some of those in, in future maps. In the meantime, you're looking at well, what's available at the time. Now I'm putting a box in here. I'm putting it underneath these things. So you see I'm really moving between levels to try to make this work. I couldn't put shadow objects under there, but you can always use a path and just make it precisely where you want it. And now I'm going to use that spot tool that you saw me use earlier because I want to try to catch some of the light off of these bottles that might be coming from the fire. Now, I see a lot of people use these animal rugs. I've never used one. So I'm going to try and see if I can use one here. They're just so bulky. Which I know animal rugs are bulky, but they, they, they look bulky. They look like almost a three-dimensional animal sitting there. I'm trying to see if there's a way that this might work. Maybe that that fire's casting some light, and it's falling on the other side of this this lion. But frankly, I just I can't can't imagine that the NPC would walk over this thing. Seems like they have to climb over it. I'm just going to delete it. Maybe I'll maybe I'll do it again someday. Here's some of those table options. Okay, level 200. Again, good level for a table. Trying to decide how this room might be used. Level 100 for the chairs. And I'm trying to think of how Tokens will move through this space. And it's, it's feeling a little crowded. Again, going on the other side of the fire with shadow objects. Wine bottle on top of there, some glasses. I'm at level 300 for those. It gives me enough room to put some shadow objects underneath them just to make it look like fires casting a shadow, even on those items. And you can see when you do that, you start stretching these shadows back. It really does make that fire stretch. Now I'm using the point tool at the orange fire setting. And I'm just highlighting the edges of these things because that fire wouldn't just cast shadows. It would also lighten up significantly the surfaces that are fire facing. So this is just how you can use light and shadow together to create the drama and create the realism of a space. And I've decided if I'm just going to have two chairs here, I'm going to have it so that this room, the bulk of it, can be occupied by tokens. Still keeping those chairs in, in discrete squares. Still trying to make an animal print work. Probably not going to do it here.
back to level 100, set to under. This will put it underneath those shadows that I placed. And if you hold the control button, you can just slightly, and you turn your mouse wheel, you can move it slowly. Sorry, not the control button, the, the Z button will give it a slow movement. And now since I've got a bathroom on this level, I've decided I'm going to make this kind of a utility room. There's a lot that happens in the town hall every day. There's probably some supplies, some washing up area. And I'm looking at the basins right now. These are the best objects we've got for um, creating sinks that are more medieval, even come with different types of hardware pumps. I just love them. I use them a lot now. Now I'm at level 100. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to get creative with my levels here because I'm going to have a lot of cabinetry and stuff like that in this room. And I'm watching my squares just to make sure that I can get, actually get tokens into this room. I decided I want these things to all look like they're uh, countertops with drawers underneath them. So just pull the drawer tool out, drawer object. I could use my path tool or my my shadow objects doesn't matter. There's also some new brooms available with the new pack. We're looking at the slightly older versions. I believe it was Leviosa from uh, the Forgotten Adventure staff just joined. I believe she made that pack. She's very, very talented if you've ever seen any of her work on the Forgotten Adventures Discord. I, I recommend you join it. There's a lot of stuff that's free to use for personal use that's posted on that Discord. So really, really amazing stuff. Uh, Levy herself has been posting a lot of that for um, for quite some time. And, and it all, I think, matches the, the Forgotten Adventure style. So it's a good source for you to go to if you're using FA for for personal use. It's a good source to go to to just find a, just a ton of interesting things that you can use. And just playing around with different cabinets, throwing a wash rag in here. Stuff you'd expect to see. Nothing earth shattering here, but you just realize that you know I'm working on different levels, especially those cabinets were at levels 300. So I could put things underneath them if I want to. And here I'm at level 200. I think I want to make a safe. I want something here that is of value that this town master keeps you know, his most prized stuff in. But there's no safe as a asset, so I'm gonna I'm gonna kit bash one, as they say. And I'm starting with that yes that stone pillar. Throwing some keys on top of it really definitely implies that it's a safe. You're going to have to explain to your users why those keys don't fit this particular safe. This one might be a combination safe. Those keys might actually be the keys to the cells downstairs, or maybe they're just the keys to the front door. And now I'm using just pieces of metal. I did a search for metal. I found these components, which I use a lot. And just because they have a nice texture and a good finish, and I don't have to show much of them, I'm just showing the edge of them. They make a really good option for hardware for a safe. The 
decided a couple more filing cabinets in here is probably appropriate. This is ultimately an administrator's building, after all. And we're getting here pretty close to the end. Um, decided just for this one room, I want to create, you know, this is, this is leading down into the cells. And so I imagine that it's got to be some lightweight defensive capabilities here. So I thought maybe this is the room that there might be a weapon rack might be used to furnish the guards who are guarding anyone down in the cells. Uh, maybe it's slight defenses for the building itself. It's town is overrun. I imagine it's the coster that would really supply most of the, the defenses to the town if, if that was required. And that's it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. The next one, we're going to do some really cool stuff. And uh, yeah, let me know in the comments if this was helpful. Thanks so much.